Today we're going to take a look at Perl. Perl was one of the most um, influential languages that came out in the 1980s, 1990s, um, and really grew through the mid-90s to be a powerhouse for web development, for bioinformatics, and for a lot of cases where you need a programming language that's fast to develop in, easy to develop, and really extensible in a lot of ways. What does Perl stand for? Any ideas? Well, according to the Perl man page, it can either stand for the practical extraction and report language, well, except when it doesn't stand for that. Sometimes it can, ex it can stand for a pathologically eclectic rubbish lister. It doesn't really stand for anything, it's just Perl. And Perl was really developed with one or two core kind of concepts. One of those concepts was that there are three principal virtues of a programmer. Their laziness, impatience, and hubris. What that means is you want to do things quickly and you want to do things without worrying too much about the exactly getting it right. Perl really embodies this through one of kind of the common Perl sayings, which is called Tim Twody. There's more than one way to do it. It's really the Perl motto, if you will. And Larry Wall, who invented Perl, is credited many times as saying that easy things should be easy and hard things should be possible. It's one of real, a real mantra that really enable Perl to grow and become the dominant programming language that it was and still is. A little bit of Perl history. It was developed in 1987 by Larry Wall. And Larry Wall has a background in languages and so developed Perl with that kind of notion of, of how people use languages to interact. Languages as in spoken languages and written languages rather than programming languages. In the early 1990s, Perl 4 was released along with the book Programming Perl. And that was really a revolutionary moment. It allowed people access to, um, to, to Perl in a very easy way, a very straightforward way, um, and really began the period where Perl dominated programming. In the mid-90s, Perl 5 was released, and the big advance of Perl 5 was that it included modules. And so you could write code and share code with other people very easily, and they could take your code, import your work, and build on the things that you've already done. And so that people didn't have to reinvent the wheel every time they wanted to develop something new. Perl 5 development has continued and Perl 5.16 was just released a year or so ago. One of the things that makes Perl such a strong language, such an important language, was the development of CPAN. CPAN is the Comprehensive Perl Archive Network. This was released in 1995 as a repository for those modules that you could suddenly use with Perl 5. People could write code, they could share code. They needed a place on the web to put that code so that they could share it with others, they could grab other people's code. Nowadays, there are more than 100,000 different modules from over 10,000 authors. And at CPAN, you can go and search through those modules. You can find modules looking at pretty much anything that you want to do. And from the command line of Perl, it's really easy to download modules, install them onto your system, and include them in your runtime. So we're still in Perl 5. Perl 5 has been in development since 1994. And uh, for a long time, we've been promised Perl 6. When it was initially announced in about the year 2000, Perl 6 was going to have massive changes in the way the language was written. 
The language has been designed with input from a lot of people, but of course, Larry Wall retains a lot of direction of, of how Perl will progress. But there have been no complete implementations of Perl 6 that are available as of now. And as time has progressed and Perl 6 was never really released, other languages came along that kind of filled that gap where Perl 6 could have fitted. So as of now, most production facilities are using Perl 5. It's been stable for a very, very long time. It's been out since 1994, almost 20 years. And that's allowed people to build a large code base that's well debugged, that's well analyzed, and is very stable. Okay, so if you're thinking about programming in some language, why would you use Perl? There's a lot of reasons that you can use them, and I've listed some of them on this text. And many of these came from an article written by Lincoln Stein. Lincoln Stein is a bioinformatician, and he wrote a really important uh, pack set of packages for manipulating CGI data, so web-based data. And the key points that, that Lincoln Stein wrote in his article, and the article is called How Perl Saved the Human Genome, is that Perl allows you to do things. It allows you to do things easily. It allows you to do things quickly. Why not Perl argument is perhaps because Perl is a pretty mature language. Maybe you want to work with something more fresh, more younger. It's a procedural language rather than an object-oriented language. The objects, the modules, they've been added on post facto, and they provide object-oriented uh, capabilities, but really Perl was written as a procedural language. There's still no compiled version of Perl. And for example, Python, which people often compare with Perl, has a compiled version called Cython. When we look at the programming community index, which is basically how much of programming code that's found in a lot of repositories, and I've provided the, the link here at the bottom of the screen. So what fraction of that code is written in Perl versus other languages? You can see that in the early 2000s through 2005, Perl was really a dominant language. Over 10% of the code in online repositories was written in Perl. But over the last five or 10 years, the importance of Perl has been somewhat declining in, um, in common programming languages found on the web. In contrast, Python has grown over that same period, the last five to eight years, and has really replaced Perl um, as a dominant programming language that's widely used on the web. But notice that Python is still not as popular as Perl was in its heyday. So how is Perl implemented? There's an interpreter. It has a compile run approach. So basically, the code is compiled at runtime. And um, many people complain that only Perl can compile Perl. What that means is there's no external compilers where you can take Perl code and compile it into, uh, for example, bytecode that could be executed. Okay, so you want to get going with Perl. What's the first step? Well, the first step is you actually have to get it. And you have a couple of different options. So if you're on a Windows machine, a couple of options that are commonly used are Strawberry Perl, shown here, and Active Perl. Both of those are widely used, continually updated and developed, and included in the system, uh, available for the systems, excuse me. Max and Linux, both of those have Perl standard as part of the distribution. It's such an integral part of the Unix environment that Perl comes as a standard implementation. 
And so all you have to do is open a terminal and type Perl, and you've got a Perl interpreter. Let me show you what I mean. Here's my terminal. If I type Perl, perhaps minus V, I have Perl version 5, subversion 2, Perl 5, 14.2. Obviously, I'm a couple of releases behind. I'm using the standard Ubuntu installation of Perl, Perl 5.14. And it shows you the uh, terms that you can get Perl under and how you can use it. There's several different ways that you can use Perl. So one of the ways that you can use it is in the command line. So for example, if I just wanted to add some numbers together, I could type Perl minus E, that means execute the following piece of code, and then I'm going to type some variables, dollar $A is equal to 2, dollar $B is equal to 3, and dollar $C is equal to dollar $A plus dollar $B. And I'll explain how the dollar signs come into play in just a second. And then we'll just print out the result, print dollar $C with a new line. And of course, it prints the answer, which is 5. So here, I've written a little piece of Perl code. It's been interpreted, it's been compiled, and it's been run. I can also write a small Perl script, let's say test.pl. And I'm going to write my script the same way. So $A is equal to 2, $B is equal to 3, and dollar $C is equal to dollar $A plus dollar $B, and then print dollar $C. If I save that, I can run that by typing Perl test.pl, and we get the same answer of 5. So we can run Perl by using the command line. We can write scripts, and scripts of course allow us to save it, to come back to the code next week, next year, whenever, to write much more extensive pieces of code, and we don't have to worry about an interpreter. So in this introduction, I've covered the basics and the history of Perl, and I've showed you how we can use Perl in scripts and in the command line. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at some more details. I'll discuss the dollar signs and what they mean, and we'll actually get into the guts of Perl. I hope you'll join us.